Uh, all right, let's get to what happened last night at Arrowhead Stadium when the Kansas City Chiefs were beaten at home by the Detroit Lions, 21 to nothing. Or, as we bring in John Breach from CBSSports.com, the Pick 6 podcast, one of the super friends there. Uh, can we say that the Chiefs beat themselves as well? Uh, I think we could say that. I think more specifically we can say Kadarius Tony beat the Chiefs. <laughs> I mean, you look at what Kansas City did, and they don't have Travis Kelty. They don't have their best skill position player out there, and they probably still should have won this game. And I would say they almost certainly win this game if Tony doesn't have possibly the worst receiving outing maybe in NFL history. I mean, <laughs> it was just ugly out there. Patrick Mahomes probably throws for 300 yards if Tony doesn't have all those drops, the pick six, obviously. Yep. Uh, so when you're talking about a one-point loss and a guy drops four passes and gives up a pick six, I'd say that's your difference right there. John Breach is joining us here. Did you have a problem? I didn't, but did you have a problem with Andy Reid's decision to go for it first on 4th and 20 and then on 4th and 25 after the fall start? Uh, I did not. We've actually debated that on the, the pick six before about what the smart strategy is there. And my thinking, uh, I think, it, say it's fourth and 10, I don't care if you're on 35, you go for it. Fourth and 20 is a little dicier. Fourth and 25, even more dicier. But I probably still go for it. And the reasoning behind that is that, look, you have to get a defensive stop. Whether you punt or whether you go for it and fail, you have to stop the Lions at some point. And so if you punt it, that gives them more of the field to wrap the clock, run the game out. If you go for it and don't get it, well, now there's only enough room for maybe one first down. You still have the three timeouts, and then they kick a field goal, and you're still only down four. So it gives you a better chance of getting the ball back if you fail, I think. So I was completely fine with Andy Reid going for it. Yeah, I didn't understand the uh, the anger at that. I mean, I thought it was – I mean, I certainly understand why – uh, maybe it's a higher percentage play to punt it and play a l- little bit more field position game. Uh, and maybe it's a case where you're, you're only down one as opposed to maybe down four. But, but ultimately, you still had to stop them uh, without, before they got a first down. If you didn't, and it was over, unless they got a first down on the first play, which is not what happened there. John Breach is joining us here. The Lions are obviously good. Um, I don't know where you picked them. I know that you picked the Bengals to win the Super Bowl, which is in and of itself kind of a bold statement based on the Bengals' history. Uh, But did this confirm anything that you thought about the Lions or maybe change your opinion of what they are? I'll be honest. It didn't really – this game I don't think told me much about either team because – uh, I have thought the Lions would go in. I think I predicted this would be a three-point Chiefs win. So I thought this would be a close game, and that was earlier this week when I thought Travis Kelsey might play. You take Kelsey out, and there's no reason. So it wouldn't be a close game. So, uh, you know, the Lions played gritty. That's their word. They always show a lot of grit, and I think that the important thing here is that we saw flashes from some of their rookies as they slowly kind of work them into the offense. So that was Jameer Gibbs uh, yep. averaging 6.6 yards per touch. Sam Laporta uh, catching all five of his targets. I mean, those two total are almost 100 yards. So you're getting 100 yards of production from your rookies, uh, and they're only going to get better. So I think as far as the Lions you know, winning is obviously huge, and I think that's a huge stepping stone toward uh, possibly winning their first playoff game in 32 years at some point down the road. Uh, <laughs> but, yes, I, I was impressed with the Lions going into the season. I'm still impressed with the Lions, but I didn't walk out of this thinking, oh, this team's going to win the Super Bowl now because they beat the Chiefs. At John Breach on Twitter, Pick 6 Podcast, Daily NFL Podcast. He is one of the super friends. He hangs out with Will Brinson and Ryan Wilson, two of our other very good friends uh, who show up on this program a lot. Uh, let's uh, let's go to the Panthers and the Falcons. Uh, to me, it's a division that, other than the Buccaneers, I think any of the three teams can win it to varying degrees. I think the Panthers are probably the third choice among the uh, among the three teams. How do you see this division, and what are your opinion? What is your opinion of what the Panthers can be? Well, I think that all four teams are relatively even. I think I agree with you. The Buccaneers are probably a a little bit step behind as far as the roster goes. But I think the Panthers, Saints, and Falcons are pretty similar with the main difference being just 
who do you trust the most at quarterback in this division? If you go through and power rank the four <laughs> quarterbacks, I think that whatever quarterback you put at top is probably the team you think is going to win the division. Obviously, Derek Carr is the most experienced, uh, but you know, experience hasn't really won him any playoffs games right. in his career, so who knows what that is. Uh, and with the Panthers, I don't know. I just don't know what to make of Bryce Young. I need to see him out there play an actual football game. There were times in the preseason where he looked a little indecisive. Uh, and what's going to happen in a regular season game when that happens is he's going to get sacked or he's going to try and scramble and, and only gain a yard and the play is going to fall apart. So I need to see what he does in those kind of situations. I think right now I'm kind of on the Falcons bandwagon. I just feel like they have the best all-around team. And Arthur Smith has built an offense that doesn't completely rely on the quarterback. I mean, obviously right. the quarterback's the most important position, but it, you know they can run the ball down your throat. So if it takes time for Desmond Ritter to figure things out, I think the Falcons can still win games. But if Bryce Young struggles to start the season, I think the Panthers are in trouble. So right now I, I like the Falcons, Saints, Panthers in third, but my mind could certainly be changed by Monday after seeing these teams play just one game. Yeah, I think uh, the biggest question mark I have for the Panthers is I don't know if they can pass block, uh, and that's a problem. I think they'll be able to run block okay. I don't think they can pass block, uh, and I'm not in love with the skill position set at uh, in terms of receiving options for uh, for Bryce, and they have to get better at that, and they're banged up uh, among at least two of their top three wide receiver targets. John Breach from CBSSports.com and the Pick 6 Podcast is here. I am intrigued by a couple of games on the schedule I want your take on before we have to say goodbye. 49ers at the Steelers. I don't know why. I'm suddenly feeling this pang of the Steelers might be sneaky good. That is... I have that feeling too. I don't think you're crazy. I, I don't think it's something that uh, I don't think we drank spoiled milk for <laughs> dinner last night. I think this is legit feeling, Adam. Uh, you look at what the Steelers have, and look, they have a great, great defense. So it's just a matter of can this offense catch up to what the defense is doing, and can this offense be as good as their defense? And they spent their offseason upgrading the offensive line. That's really what they need to do. And, and I think the big question is can Kenny pick it? take that giant step forward. It looked like he started to take it uh, at the end of last season. He seemed to be getting better week in and week out. And man, I would not be surprised at all if the Steelers upset the 49ers. I think that Brock Purdy, you know, we saw him play five games. Nobody knew who Brock Purdy was. Right. Now you have all this film on him. Mike Tomlin's one of the smartest defensive coaches in the NFL. I think that Pur Purdy is going to struggle against the Steelers defense. And I won't be surprised at all if Pittsburgh uh, wins this one an upset. I will not I, I will not be either. Plus, uh, home underdogs are always cool. Here's another home underdog. we got to wait all the way to Monday night. Uh, it is the debut of Aaron Rodgers with the New York Jets. I, I, I almost feel like for, for Rodgers and the Jets in New York, this is almost like you better win the game because if you don't, it's already going to start. Same old Jets, but it is the Bills. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of pressure on the Jets in this game, which does seem a little crazy because they are the underdog. But when you bring in Aaron Rodgers, let's not forget this game's being played on the anniversary of 9-11 in New York. So there's just all this added pressure. Uh, you're talking about a team that's been on hard knocks and people have been watching <laughs> you and the spotlight's been on you all off season. And on the flip side, the Bills have somehow been, I don't know if they're being slept on or just everyone forgot they existed, but except for that kind of, quick Stefan Diggs drama that lasted for a few weeks in June. We haven't really heard anything from the Buffalo Bills this entire offseason. They've just been kind of quietly going about their business. They seem more than happy to be flying under the radar. I think I do like the Jets in this game because I thought they were good last year, just minus their disastrous quarterback situation. Throw Aaron Rodgers in there, uh, and I just think the Jets are going to have that kind of underdog no one respects us edge which they should have because they're the underdog monday so i i do think i like the jets a little more than the bills on monday night and honestly who does respect the jets i mean if we're being <laughs> honest i mean nobody respects the jets because they don't re they don't really deserve anybody's respect you deserve respect john breach cbs sports.com pick six podcast at john breach on twitter we'll talk to you again down the road sir i appreciate your time